Human rights activists and war crimes experts have been weighing in on the death of Muammar Gaddafi. I recently spoke with David Crane, founding chief prosecutor of the Special Court for Sierra Leone and professor of law at Syracuse University. We spoke about what constitutes a war crime. A war crime is a violation of the laws of armed conflict that have been in place uh, since the Geneva Conventions of 1949, and they make up several types of, uh, of rules. But the bottom line is, is that we're here to protect persons found on the battlefield, ensuring that if you target someone, that there is a militarily necessary reason to do so, uh, that you use weapons that are calculated not to cause unnecessary suffering, uh, that your response is proportional, uh, and that you are discriminate in the use of your weapon systems, targeting all, only those uh, things that are of military necessity, uh, and protecting uh, protected places and persons such as civilians. Civilians can never be intentionally targeted. In the case of Libya, they were looking for Muammar Gaddafi. He himself says, I'm going to die uh, fighting to the bitter end. Uh, how do you characterize his last moments? I fully appreciate the emotions and, uh, of the moment. And here you have an individual uh, who has been ruling oppressively a country for 42 years. Technically, he was a military target. Uh, he could have been engaged and, in fact, killed because he was the leader of the armed forces of Libya, which makes him a military target. However, as the facts seem to be at this moment, uh, he was captured hiding in a drainage ditch. As soon as they captured him, he was a protected person, and he had to be treated humanely and not killed. Regardless of the emotions, we're technically speaking here now, uh, Muammar Gaddafi was in their custody, he was to be protected, he was supposed to be treated of his wounds, uh, and later after he was treated to potentially under Libyan domestic law or uh, under international law with the International Criminal Court could have been prosecuted for allegations of war crimes and crimes against humanity. But Muammar Gaddafi uh, was a protected person uh, and he was in the custody of the uh, Libyan rebels and they had an obligation to protect him and his killing was technically a murder and in violation of the laws of armed conflict. It was a war crime itself. As a prosecutor, do you find that this is where a case can really get sticky because there's a question of the chain of command and uh, in the confusion of things, perhaps just one guy down the chain of command commits this crime and the generals on the, f in, the, on the, f in the field could say, I did not order my boys to do that, but someone did it. Technically speaking, it was murder. The individual who shot, allegedly, Muammar Gaddafi in the head with uh, the weapon uh, had committed a murder. Uh, whether it was unilateral or under command of a commander, uh, that was a violation of the laws of armed conflict. So technically speaking, uh, there should be some accounting. However, practically, and we live in a practical world, uh, it'll be up to the Libyans to decide uh, what they choose to do with that individual, uh, that commander on the scene related to the uh, killing of Muammar Gaddafi. There are those, um, you know, who become a little more cynical and they say, well, uh, show me a case where this really has been enforced, or somebody has gone to jail, or uh, somebody has really, you know, been punished for war crimes, especially on the continent of Africa. What did you tell them? We've made tremendous progress over the past 15 years. In fact, it's amazing progress when I call the modern international criminal law paradigm. Just 15 years ago, it was unthinkable that a head of state would be held accountable for what they did to their own citizens. Uh, and we've held accountable people like Karadic, Maladic, uh, Charles Taylor, uh, Saddam Hussein, others, for war crimes, crimes against humanity, and even genocide. What they have done to uh, citizens of another country, but as well as to their own citizens. Uh, that in and of itself is an amazing step forward. The movement of gender crimes and holding uh, leaders accountable for what they do to women and, and children, the child soldier phenomenon. We're now prosecuting for the unlawful recruitment of children under the age of 15. Uh, it's not perfect, and I'm not saying that it's perfect, but we are moving forward. It's sometimes two steps forward, one step back, but certainly uh, the rule of law is uh, moving forward related to ensuring that citizens of the world have a right to live in peace and freedom. 
you know, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights uh, of 1948 was a very important document. We tend to forget that. But it said, for the first time legally in history, uh, that a human being has a right to exist and to live their life free from want and fear and the ability to uh, speak their mind and to worship under their own cultural traditions. These are important concepts.